STEM Epic Heroes. Ugh. I've been waiting so long for a cool science game, and here we finally are. So there are two main decks. The blue one is the hero deck, and the green one is the discovery deck. You can play with up to four players, but if you're only playing with two, then take out these five point discovery cards, which are all solid colors of green, blue, purple, yellow, orange, yellow. <laughs> and now shuffle both the hero and discovery decks and give everyone six blue cards. You can then discard and redraw any number of cards you want before we start playing. Just reshuffle the discarded hero cards back into the deck. Now take the top five discovery cards and put them face up in the middle, which will be the field. Now hero deck goes to the left and discovery deck goes on the right. The first player is determined by whoever can recite the most digits of pi. Now the whole point of the game is to gain discovery cards from steps one through five of the scientific method, and you can acquire them in any order. On your turn, you have three possible actions. The first thing you can do is if you have a matching color or type of hero and discovery card like a science hero to a science discovery and the two colors count for green and blue, then you can activate your hero card and, sky, and then place the hero on top of the discovery card next to you. Right after, you can play one item or one location card on the discovery skip that you're gaining. You can only gain one discovery card per turn. Now the second action you can do is instead of gaining a new discovery card, you can actually add one enhancement to a discovery card that you already have and that discovery card cannot exceed one item enhancement and one location enhancement. So let's say I have an observation step as my discovery card, I can add a science lab to it as a location this turn, and then I can add a microscope as a science item on a separate turn, which both add bonus points to it. Now, the third possible action is to take no action. And after you finish your turn, you put a new discovery card face up from the deck. If the player did not get a new discovery card from the field on their turn, then they have to pick a discovery card from the field, discard it, and then replace it with a new discovery card. And then finally, you can end your turn by discarding up to three cards from your hand and drawing until your hand reaches six cards. The thing is, you can't have any more than six cards at the end of your turn, but if you do have more, then discard until you have six. Now, if either the Discovery or the Hero decks went out, then just go ahead and reshuffle the discarded pile. And then if you draw Inspiration cards here and play them right away, you don't get to keep drawing cards, so you'd have to wait until your next turn to keep drawing cards. Now, speaking of Inspiration cards, let's take a look at each type of card in the game, starting first with the Discovery cards. So the green backing are the discovery cards, and again, you can gain them in any order, even if the steps 1 through 5 are out of order. You can gain one of each step, and the heroes have to match the discovery card, just like Alexander Graham Bell, a purple hero, can only get purple discovery cards. Now the polymath heroes act like wild cards, so Hapeshi here can acquire any type of discovery card. Now some discovery cards also have a hybrid, so two colors meaning a hero of either type can score those discovery cards. And if you have a wild step card, same concept as the polymath heroes, they count for any step, but they still have to be matched by a hero of the same type. You also have to declare, then and there, what step it is. So you can't like go back and say, oh my god, I want to be step 3 now instead of step 2. No. Once you say step 2, it has to be step 2. Now hero cards have a stem type, and again you play them to match the discovery card. Every hero has their own special ability that gets activated right away, unless it affects the end score calculation. But just remember that if an item is worth more points if paired with a specific hero, then the item still has to be on the hero by the end of the game. Like for Alice Ball, her ability lets the science lab be worth 6 points total if they're paired together, and this only works if the two are still together by the end of the game. Now, enhancement cards are the items or locations that we talked about earlier. But to add on to it, if an enhancement is taken from an opponent, then it has to be added on top of a matching or polymath hero. Now for inspiration cards, which all have a lightning symbol, these can be played at any time, even if it's not your turn, and activate and resolve immediately before anyone else plays an another inspiration card. So yes, another Yu-Gi-Oh reference, but if you ever played Yu-Gi-Oh, it's similar to like a hand trap or like a quick play magic card. Like if another player activates James Clerk Maxwell's ability called Electromagnetism, letting them take an enhancement from you and add it to their own collection, you can, in response, play Patent Speed with Roll and turn block it. And the last type of cards are challenge cards, which are optional. If you want to play with these yellow challenge cards, shuffle the 10 of them and then deal 4 face up on the field like this. So whoever completes a challenge on the card takes it to their field and then adds those points to their score. Now what's cool is that when someone gains a challenge card, they don't lose it in response to an inspiration card. So let's say I gain this two item challenge card, and then later on someone plays lost results. I still get to keep this challenge card, but in turn lose a discovery. Now the end game is finally triggered when someone acquires all five steps of the scientific method, and then play continues until it reaches the player who goes first. So let's say player one goes first, and I trigger end game as player three, then player four goes, and then that's it, we start scoring. So all you do now is add up how many points that you have and resolve ties by seeing whoever has the least amount of played cards. Now before you go, STEM Epic Heroes actually came with a little secret booster pack. I don't know if they told us that it would, but I'm kind of surprised myself actually. So, let's see what's inside. Of course, stupid packaging would take freaking annoying... Oh my god, of course. Alright, okay. <laughs> we did it. 
Oh, cool. They're all Hall of Foil. <gasps> Albert Einstein. That's freaking cool. And they have a bunch of other heroes, too. Wow, this is, like, really nice. I wish all the cards were like this, too. So, anyways, that is Stem Epic Heroes. I hope you guys liked that tutorial. Um, I don't know what I'm doing next. But, if anything, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.